I am Dr. Sasikala, reader from the Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery, SRM Dental College and Hospital, Ramabram. I am going to talk on application of dextrose prolotherapy for the management of temporomandibular joint internal derangement. Temporal mandibular joint disorders are a common problem across the world. It has been categorized based on the origin of the problem into myogenous involved in the muscles and orthogenous involved in the joint. Dolbeck in the year 1983 defined internal derangement as a disruption within the internal aspects of the TMJ in which there is a displacement of the disc from its normal function relationship with the mandibular condyle and the articular portion of the temporal bone. It manifests with TMJ pain, clicking, deviation, and restricted mouth opening. TMJ internal derangement may be caused by microtrauma and macrotrauma which leads to elongation of inferior rethrodiscal lamina and discal collateral ligaments that causes positioning of the disc more anteriorly by the pull of the superior lateral pterygoid muscle, which in turn leads to disc displacement. A repetitive trauma to the ligament and tendon results in incomplete healing of the tissue because of its poor blood supply. Over time, this results in ligament and connective tissue laxity. Various treatment modalities have been advocated for the internal derangement of TMJ. These can be categorized as conservative, minimally invasive and surgical. Choosing the treatment of this condition is challenging due to its multimodal therapy. Prolotherapy is defined as a rehabilitation of incompetent structure such as ligament or tendon by inducing the proliferation of cell. It is derived from the Latin word proli meaning offspring. It has been successfully used in other joints of the body for problems such as knee and low back pain. However, the use of this minimally invasive technique for the management of TMJ disorders is still in the seminal level. Limited literature is available on the application of prolotherapy to TMJ internal derangement. Now, we say about the biology of prolotherapy. When the body is unable to heal itself, which is often the case when the avascular tissues such as ligaments, tendons, cartilage, and fibrocartilage are injured, prolotherapy is utilized to stimulate healing. This is a schematic depiction of the application of the therapeutic principles of prolotherapy encompassing the inflammatory proliferation and tissue remodeling phases of the healing and restoration process of the injured ligament and tendons. First stage of wound healing cascade is inflammatory phase which is initiated after the prolotherapy injection which causes mast cell and platelet activation precipitating vascular and cellular responses which in turn releases proliferative mediators and macrophages. Second stage, a cellular reaction takes place in which various cells including fibroblast, endothelial cells and myofibroblast form new blood vessels and ultimately lay down collagen which enhances tissue repair and strength. Final phase of healing is tissue remodeling. For many months after an injury or prolotherapy, Tissue continues to remodel. The new tissue that results looks and functions very closely to the original tissue before the injury. Various proliferant solutions reported in the literature include phenol, glycerin, dextrose, etc. Dextrose is the commonly used solution as it is a normal constituent of blood and can be injected safely into multiple areas. A dextrose concentration of 0.5% causes inflammation which releases various growth factors such as platelet-derived growth factor, transforming growth factor beta, epidermal growth factor, etc. When hypertonic dextrose that is equivalent to or more than 10% is injected, creates an osmotic gradient which causes cell dehydration and lysis, which in turn leads to inflammation and influx of growth factors that initiates wound healing. We move on to the composition and techniques of prolotherapy. It consists of 50% dextrose, 2% lignocaine with adrenaline and bacteriostatic water. These components when drawn in a 5 ml syringe and mixed prior to injection. Using 26 scotch 1 inch needle, the solution was injected into three target sites after painting and draping by using Hamwell Hackett method. The posterior joint space was located by depression formed anterior to the tragus while opening the mouth. The needle was directed anteromedially to avoid penetration into the ear. Since TMJ dis displacement is usually anterior, priority is to accomplish repair of the extended or torn posterior disc attachment. The second site was the anterior disc attachment to lateral pterygoid muscle. This was identified by the depression form 
slightly anterior to the condyle when patient closes the mouth. This muscle is often foreshortened or in spasm in cases of chronic disc displacement. So injecting the prolotherapy solution here can strengthen the tendinous attachment of this muscle to the disc. At the same time, the analgesic component anesthetizes and elongates the muscles. The last site was mystery attachment along the inferior border zygomatic arch at the most tender area. Most TMD patients have some chronic mystery tension and pain with the resultant strain on its attachment to zygomatic arch. The third ml of prolotherapy solution is used to address this problem. 1 ml each of the prolotherapy solution was injected into these three sites. Four injections of prolotherapy were administered over a period of three months. Patients were instructed to take paracetamol if pain exists, follow soft diet and not to take any anti-inflammatory drugs. Animal studies using prolotherapy had demonstrated ligament thickening, enlargement of the tendinosseous junction and strengthening of the tendon or ligament. Another study showed significant increase in the strength of bone ligament junctions and in the proliferation of collagen fibrils following injection of prolotherapy solution. Prolotherapy has been used extensively for musculoskeletal and joint disorders of the body. It is commonly used for chronic musculoskeletal pain, cervical spine instability, low back pain, chronic shoulder and knee pain. Numerous studies evaluated the effectiveness of dextrose prolotherapy for TMJ dislocation with various success rates. Few studies assess its effectiveness on TMJ disorders with good success rates. Complications of prolotherapy are temporary facial nerve paralysis, which will become normal after a few hours, occurrence of ipsilateral posterior open bite. This has been attributed to an increase in the joint space because of the injected solution. With this, I conclude that dextrose prolotherapy may be helpful for the solution of pain, clicking and improvement in mouth opening in patients with TMJ internal derangement and also provides long-term relief of symptoms. So, it may be considered in patients with TMJ internal derangement before any surgical intervention.